Happy Easter, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God, our Creator, the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship which is their Holy Spirit be with you always. With confidence, let us ask God for forgiveness of our sins so we may move ourselves from the tomb and be an Easter Alleluia people. Lord Jesus, you took on flesh to show us how to live and how to love. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died for us. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead, separating all that separates us from God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know it has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, 
who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Drugie czytanie z listu świętego Pawła Apostoła do Kolosan. Bracia, jeśliście razem z Chrystusem powstali zmarłych, szukajcie tego, co jest w górze, gdzie przebywa Chrystus, zaświadczając po, po prawicy Boga. Dążcie do tego, co jest w górze, a nie do tego, co jest na ziemi. Umarliście bowiem. I wasze życie ukryte jest Chrystusem w Bogu. Ukażcie, gdy się ukaże Chrystus, nasze życie wtedy i wy razem z Nim ukażecie się chwale. Bogu niech będą dzięki.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the town early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple of things of importance, obviously. The ones, the one who got the whole story rolling about the resurrection, of course, is a woman. Yet Mary is a little bit confused and perhaps thinking that they stole the Lord. So she reports it to Simon and to the disciple whom Jesus loved, we think, John. So they ran to check things out. John's a quicker runner, gets there and looks and sees that the Lord is not there, but doesn't enter because it's not his place. That belongs to Simon, to whom the, trust, the church has been entrusted. And was he stolen? Simon goes in and sees the burial cloth here and the ones covering his head over here. Surely if someone was going to steal the body, they would just pick the body up and run and not worry about untying all the cloths. So it can't be that the body was stolen. And then John goes in and he sees and they start to understand. And think about what was said before. Three days I will be lifted up. And then they go and they announce the great news that this Jesus who was placed dead in a tomb in whom a large stone was put in front of that tomb just to make sure that the love that God has can't be contained by death, by a tomb, and by a stone. And so Christ bursts forth and rises so there's no more separation between us and God. Conquered sin, conquered death, and love remains. And inviting us to love eternal, eternal life with God. That's the Easter story. As Mary went to visit the tomb, a lot of us today may go and visit tombs. Father Jack, who was here last night, he and I will meet up at the cemetery where our mother's and our third priest friend of ours' mother is. And we'll go in and we'll make the rounds. It's first his mother, then his aunt, uncle, cousin, my parents, my niece, the other priest's mother, and then we end with my nephew over here. That's making the rounds. But we're just visiting their graves, where their bodies are, not their souls. Because they're in heaven, as we hear, in the palm of God's hand. That's the faith we celebrate. For you and for me, who so cherish this life, who want to live as long as we can, as healthy as we can, this still isn't it. That there's something more, much more than we can imagine. But our loved ones who have gone before us, they understand. And one day we will too, because Christ has died, but has risen, and invites us to do the same. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works? and all His empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Please remain standing. With confidence, let us present our petitions to our God, knowing indeed that we have a God who is loving, compassionate, and always willing to listen to our needs. We pray for the Church, for our Pope Francis, our Bishop Dennis, and all those with ministries within the Church, that they may be women and men of integrity and gospel values. We pray to the Lord. For all government officials, that they may work tirelessly for justice and peace, especially for the voiceless, we pray to the Lord. For anyone who may be experiencing illness of mind, body, spirit, that they may be blessed, comforted, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are unemployed or underemployed, that they may be given the dignity they deserve, we pray to the Lord. For those who are separated, continuously because of this pandemic from their loved ones, that in some way they may feel that affection, we pray to the Lord. And for all those who we have lost since last Easter, especially those who have died because of this incredible pandemic, and those who continue to suffer and die, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you are the resurrected Christ who invites us all back to home with you. We ask you to hear our needs so that one day we may accept that great gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord. We offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all those who minister your gospel. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and we offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our litany to St. Joseph, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. God our Father of heaven. God the Son, Redeemer of the world. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Holy Mary, St. Joseph, renowned offspring of David, light of patriarchs, spouse of the Mother of God, guardian of the Virgin, foster father of the Son of God, diligent protector of Christ, head of the Holy Family, Joseph chaste and just, Joseph prudent and brave, Joseph most strong, Joseph obedient and faithful, pattern of patience, lover of poverty, model of workers, example to parents, pillar of family life, guardian of virgins, comfort of the troubled, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of evil spirits, protector of holy church, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He made him the Lord of his house. Let us pray. God, in your infinite wisdom and love, you chose St. Joseph to be the husband of Mary, the mother of your son. May we have the help of his prayers in heaven and enjoy his protection on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the conclusion of the liturgy, John will move uh, the blessed Easter water uh, to the center here for each to take one home for your family. Thank you for all those who had preparation in all the liturgies from Holy Thursday last night to the vigil and then today. Blessings on all of you on this Easter season and those whom you love. Uh, may it be one of joy and hope for this world. Certainly needs that hope now more than ever. Uh, and then let us pray for hope to the end of, especially of this pandemic. Thank you for visiting, and uh, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.